Welcome to Task Analysis and Progress Monitoring for the Paraprofessional. This session will provide an identification of the definition and purpose of task analysis, allow participants to understand the correlation between task analysis and pre-employment transition services, or PREETS, as outlined in individual students' post-secondary transition plans, and finally allow participants to demonstrate an understanding of task analysis by completing an individual task analysis and reflection. Before we jump into this, however, let's define what is task analysis. The term task analysis can mean different things in different settings, but for our purpose, task analysis is a procedure of breaking down a job step by step. The task analysis helps the job coach figure out where and how assistance is needed for individual students. The task analysis provides the platform for a student to learn. It takes away the assumption that a student with a disability is not able to learn multi-step tasks. The student becomes self-sufficient. If the task analysis is not working, then we need to look at coaching and environmental changes as we want to be sure that the student is not to blame. No task is too difficult for a student. Most employers do want and need tasks to be done a certain way, and task analysis allows us the opportunity to support that. Task analysis creates a consistent, systematic approach and common language for teaching. It provides the opportunity to document progress and the level of instruction that is being provided to a student. Through task analysis, you can see small improvements as students are learning the task and becoming more comfortable. It allows for you to demonstrate and identify if the teaching that's being provided to the student is effective and if there are additional supports or assistance that may be needed. And finally, task analysis allows us to determine where accommodations may be necessary. Evidence-based practices. It's important to note that task analysis is an evidence-based practice. Evidence-based predictors or practices are activities, services, and supports that occur during the school years that have been identified through research as being associated with higher rates of success as youth enter adulthood, long-term long goal building, and independence in youth. We wanna note that task analysis is an evidence-based practice that can provide students the opportunity to move towards independence. This practice will support them once they leave high school. Why would we use task analysis? In research conducted by Indiana University at Bloomington, we know that task analysis can be used to teach a difficult skill to a learner who struggles learning it all at once. Task analysis can Task analysis can also provide consistency to learners as there may be multiple job coaches supporting one individual student. Task analysis allows us to tailor the work to fit, fit the needs of the specific learner. And it also can help us tailor the learning to fit an environment, i.e. if a student is out at a work site, that learning environment might be different than if they're in a classroom. Finally, task analysis can be team-based and can include all adults who support the students, not just necessarily ones who are on the job supporting the student. Let's briefly talk about the types of task analysis. It should be noted that a further video in this module will allow you to dig deeper into the different types of task analysis. However, task analysis types include backwards chaining, where the teacher or the tra trainer completes all of the steps or skills identified in the task analysis, except for the final step in the chain. When the youth accurately performs the final step or the final skill in that chain, reinforcement is delivered and the next to last step or skill is introduced. Next would be forward chaining. Here, steps or skills are identified in a task analysis and are taught in their naturally occurring order. Initially, reinforcement is delivered when the youth accurately completes the first step or the first skill in the sequence. And then the next time the skill is taught, the second step becomes the one that is reinforced. The next type is total task chaining. This is a variation of forward chaining in which the learner receives instruction and reinforcement on each step of the task each time it is being taught. 
sometimes referred to as concurrent training. Prompting is also used in conjunction with chaining to teach the individual skills. In determining which chaining strategy to use, consider the nature of the task and the youth's baseline performance. For example, if a task has a strong natural reinforcer at the end, for example, cooking a preferred meal and getting to eat that, then using something like the backwards chaining would capitalize on that natural reinforcer for the student. On the other hand, if youth is at a baseline and they're most successful when the first few steps of a task analysis are given to them, perhaps forward chaining would most likely be the highest success and motivation. It should be noted that this should be a discussion with the team and really identify which would be the best way to provide that student instruction. We are going to take a look at an example of conducting a task analysis now. A task analysis, or TA, is an evidence-based process of breaking up a skill into smaller, more manageable steps in order to teach the skill. School and business staff benefit from the use of a TA because it serves as a written record of student performance and business expectations. Businesses do not have to devote additional time to training school staff who may be unfamiliar with a business site. A TA provides structure to ensure that a student is taught the task the same way each time and instruction can be consistently delivered between multiple instructors. This prevents instructors from using different teaching techniques, which can lead to student confusion and frustration. Even if the same staff member is not able to work with the same student within the classroom or work experience, use of a TA means data collection is still objective, reliable, and can be replicated. Furthermore, consistency in instruction will aid in student mastery and independence. Start by observing or completing the required task yourself and write down each step needed to complete the task. When writing down the steps, ask yourself if each step transitions to the next, if prerequisite skills are required, or if a task can be broken into smaller subtasks. For example, it may be sufficient to break a step into fold five towels, but another student may need additional steps to count out five towels and explicit instructions on how to fold each towel in this example, folding or counting is a prerequisite skill, and the subtask of collecting five towels may need to be broken into further components, depending on the student's skill level. The length of the TA will vary depending on the complexity of the task and the particular student's abilities. Each step should be comprised of a single observable behavior and assigned a verbal cue. This way, if a verbal prompt is given, it will be the same verbal prompt no matter who is using the task analysis. Steps are ordered in the sequence in which they will be taught, and natural supports and strategies should be built into the TA. For example, if a student uses a visual support for a particular task, such as a reminder on the number of towels needed, the TA should include a verbal cue to use this visual. Here, the steps should be written as, check your sign, for the correct number of towels instead of something like get correct number of towels parentheses five and parentheses the step is a verbal cue that can be stated to the student and it directs the student to use the visual support the final step is to test the ta follow the exact steps of the ta you created and test to see if this task is completed successfully very few tas are ever perfect on the first go round Testing the TA allows you to assess whether the skills are broken down appropriately and if you forgot any steps. It's good practice when writing out the TA to question whether or not this is the most efficient way to complete a task. Is the student collecting all necessary items in one trip to avoid wasting time with multiple trips? Is the student using both hands to increase her pace? This practice may help you to avoid having to untrain routines and reteach tasks down the road. Eliminating discrimination from a task ensures that quality standards are set and maintained. For example, rather than teach a student to determine if a surface needs to be cleaned, teach the student to clean an entire surface using a particular pattern, like an up and down motion. So instead of saying, clean mats if needed, this step could be reworded to clean mats starting at top right corner and move on to next mat. 
Eliminating discrimination also keeps a task routine, consistent, and reduces the chance that a student will develop error patterns over time. The VCU Center on Transition Innovations is funded by the Virginia Department of Education. For further information about the Center on Transition Innovations, please visit our website at centerontransition.org. When completing a task analysis, take small steps. Record steps in order. This allows the student to focus on one step at a time when learning the task and for the job coach to focus on the challenges of the job and how they can be accommodated. Tasks must be either doable by the student or be able to be accommodated. Having an understanding of all the steps involved for a particular task can assist in identifying any steps that may need extra instruction and will help teach the task in a logical progression. A task analysis is developed by using one of three methods. First, competent individuals who have demonstrated expertise can be observed and steps documented. A second method is to consult experts in performing the required task. And finally, those who are teaching the skill can perform the tasks themselves and document each step. We are going to ask you take some time to reflect. At this time, please identify what are one or two job tasks that you could see a task analysis being a benefit for with students that you support. Think about how to bring this to the team and how to have this discussion to move forward in using task analysis with the students that you job coach. 